Hello everyone, this is Dawn here with a uh, brief message um, today. It is the winter solstice here in the United States. It is December the 21st, 2019. We are um, making that turn and it's feeling good to me. I hope it's feeling good to you and into um, the years ahead that uh, when we truly will come together and fly together as birds of a feather and we will um, experience what many of us have uh, dreamed about, know we are here for, um, and to usher in um, and have anticipated for so long. And, you know, so the energy to me uh, feels a lot more like Easter than um, winter solstice typically does, and I'm just um, thrilled with that. You know, I hope that you're feeling that the brightness and the lightness and the lifting, regardless of what is happening externally today. I hope that you are really connected with that and um, aware that it is uh, unfolding from within. I'm sorry for the unstableness of my um, device at the moment, but this is the best way that I could record this for you today. So yeah, it feels a lot, a lot, um, a, a lifting, a brightness, an elevation, and also not just an elevation as in higher, you know, like higher dimensions closer to heaven or anything like that, but more grounded than, um, than I personally have felt in, in some time in terms of the energy, the energetics around me. Um, even at moments when I have felt grounded, I have been like, oh, this is completely unstable. <laughs> so there is a, a just, a, it's a stable energy. It's coming in still. So there's a little bit of instability within that stability, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Um, and um, but again, it just feels so light and uh, playful. And I, as I say that, you know, I'm um, I'm in a different location, and I'm actually cat sitting. So there's a cat here, and it's very happy today. <laughs> so you'll hear that in the background. So the energy just feels wonderful to me. And um, a couple of things right up front. I may share a series of videos um, that will uh, pertain to um, the Sacred Partnership journey and book that I introduced last year, and I may um, do a series of that soon here on this channel. This particular video, however, um, is um, one that I was asked to share that is so funny. Like, okay, so I haven't really felt in the mood if you if you want to put it that way to um to share messages uh coming through you know to me oh it's 1 44 p.m as i'm saying this on the solstice i haven't felt um really a desire to get on video and share anything about you know messages that that have been coming through um from from jesus and from uh, the higher realms much at all in the last uh, four or five months for a variety of reasons. Um, not completely resistant to those. I just, I don't know. I've just been like, what's the point, you know? And um, so this morning slash last night, um, Jesus used some rather uh, humorous means to get my attention. He sent me a bunch of fairies. As many of you know, I love Ireland. And so there were fairies that showed up. And then even a little, uh, a little um, synchronicity that had to do um, with uh, uh, some music that I love. And then there was Matthew McConaughey saying, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> and then there was, in this uh, apartment that I'm staying in, there's a um, beautiful um, uh, poster, it's on fabric actually, but it's um, a uh, poster for a rock band and it features some artwork that is a balloon that is halfway dissolved and lifting up to the heavens and that artwork um, he used to remind me of something that's very meaningful to me re regarding uh, that rainbow kind of energy hot air balloons and and the um, again the, the idea of elevation so my point is it's been quite hysterical oh and the last thing was uh, two Beatles songs, right? Um, very different Beatles songs. One was Norwegian Wood, and the other one is Yellow Submarine. And um, all of those things, you know, were tied back to this in this most recent message that, um, you know, I was, or, you know, I guess you'd say vision slash message I was given to share. So here I am, a um, little all over the place, but um, 
Let me just uh, dive in. I'm not exactly sure what, how to even succinctly say uh, the message, but it, it is in general around this uh, this marker here. And remember, in my in my last video, if you watched that, I was talking about the. Um, this phase of what we're in now is about freedom this week in particular the 21st through i think it was the 27th um, but those these six or seven days it's about freedom and the reclamation of that freedom and the full freedom um, to celebrate who we are together and that's the message of this video it's about uh, a particular um, parable that Jesus shared on the sower and the reaper and uh, or actually some some of what he shared with his um, disciples um, and okay so like it was just hilarious how he was getting my attention like and then he sent a hawk of course and I haven't seen a hawk I hawks my totem animal and I, I don't think I've seen one and it stayed here forever and I only had my phone and I was like oh I want a picture of that but the hawk was like pew, sending me messages so um it was clear that I needed to share this. Let me dive in. So um, in the, um, the stories uh, of Jesus, um, there is in John's gospel um, in chapter four, there is the, uh, the moment where Jesus is, uh, Yeshua is at the, um, at, with the woman at the well, uh, the Samaritan woman she's called in the gospel of John. Uh, that's how she's referred to there and and he's having this rather deep conversation now at the time um, that this was happening you know there was a rabbinical uh, tradition where it was you know forbidden or highly discouraged um, and crossing a line for a man to be seen in public talking to any woman even his wife that was the convention of the time but as we know uh, Jesus was not a conventional teacher and here he was having a very deep discussion with the woman uh, that um, the Samaritan is referred to as a Samaritan woman and his disciples come up from afar and they see him talking to her and they're shocked and and she in fact knows you know or, or she the implication is that she has um, realizes that this is not right in tr terms of tradition um, and so she actually leaves her um, jar there and runs back to the village and then uh, proceeds to tell everyone, you know, I met a man who knew everything I'd ever done. And um, and th there's a lot, I think, that's not in the gospel story. But that's the context, right? Jesus has just had this conversation with the Samaritan woman, and his disciples are aghast. And then his disciples, you know, they return, and um, but yet they're they're afraid to speak what they are thinking. Um, it says in uh, starting with um, verse 27 in chapter 4 of John it says but no one asked none of the disciples asked what do you want or why are you talking with her then leaving her water jar the woman went back to the town and said to the people come see a man who told me everything I ever did could he be the Messiah they came out of the town and made their way toward him meanwhile his disciples urged Jesus, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. And his disciples said, could someone have brought him food? My food, said Jesus. And think about nourishment here, okay? My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Don't you have a saying? It is still four months until harvest. Now, keep in mind, four months till harvest. Harvest was typically in the spring. So this was the same time of year it is now. It was December, likely. And Jesus says, don't you have a saying? It's still four months until the harvest. I tell you, open your eyes and look into the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Even now, the one who reaps draws a wage and harvests a crop for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper may be glad. So I want you to think about the sower and the reaper. So Jesus is saying, here it is, middle of December, not anywhere close to time for harvest. Nothing's happening in terms of the agrarian culture, the, the farmer's work. There's nothing to do. Um, and Jesus says, even now, the fields are ripe unto harvest. Even now, the one who reaps draws a wage and harvests a crop for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Thus the saying, one sows and another reaps, is true. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. 
Others have done the hard work and you have reaped the benefits of their labor. So consider that Jesus is saying, you know, this nourishment, the spiritual nourishment, it, it comes from doing the will of the Father, from our action, from our willingness to do our part, whatever that might be. Those who plant the seeds of the gospel are not always the same who see those seeds take root and grow and flourish and who reap the harvest. So in other words, sometimes it happens that, you know, you know, you can see it in our world as a matter of timing, but the sower and the reaper, they have distinct roles. And yet Jesus is here talking about that, that the fields are ripe unto the harvest and he says this it, the, the whole point is so that the sower and the reaper may be glad in the harvest and so in in what is to come right because here it is fields are you know nothing's happening on the fields and yet it is he's saying it is so i just wanted to share that uh with you and then my thoughts on that are that this is how where we are at this point in time we are you know ushering in a grace-filled revolution of love uh if you don't want to think of it as a revolution it is a harvest it is the bringing forth of the fulfillment of that law of love that we are here to be representatives of and unique expressions of here in our time and um and I'm going to be sharing from um, the work that I released in 2012, Awakening the World Within, and that, that book and, and the message of cultivating essence from the matrix of soul, which was all about here in our time, we must become as gardeners, working side by side, ushering in a new agrarian society, a society that springs forth from our hearts and, and that ushers in, you know, like that, in a river of love that flows into the to the lands just like those initial early rivers of civilization in in the in the riverbed of civilization in the Middle East did you know the Euphrates and the Ur and whatever else that was called you know and that's where we are right now we are awakening the world within and finding our forward flow and embracing a new vision a uh, new vision for what it means to be a human family and we are a family of sowers and of reapers. And um, I want to talk about those two groups, you know, because the sowers, they're, they're the hard workers, right? They're the ones who plant the seeds. They're the seed scatterers, and they are the ones who um, initially plant that, that small, tiny seed. And often they don't get to see it come to life. And they, don't, they, don't, they don't always get to reap the harvest. And the opportunity for the, the sowers is to recognize, you know, where they have uh, felt forgotten or abandoned or betrayed or left out of the joy of reaping the harvest. The opportunity for the sowers is to find joy in the faithful living of our purpose, to celebrate the whole harvest and um, to realize that our part is essential and integral to the fulfillment of that harvest. And, and, and the fulfillment, you know, is, as I just mentioned, of the establishment of the law of what I call the law of love or the one love, the one light, um, the being faithful and true to what we know and allowing ourselves to be vessels for that, for the, the sharing of that, for the watering, um, for the rivers to, to, to rush out from us into the land. And together we as sowers are co-creating a, a new reality, a new earth, a new way of being. And sometimes it, it, we can get lost and feel like either it doesn't matter or you know that it's somehow unfair because we don't get to be the ones you know like we've been toiling and laboring for and i'm saying we but you know if you identify with this it's not all of us but um i do in part identify with this you know it, it feels sometimes like it can be bewildering <laughs> You know, like, it's like, what is happening here? And, and Jesus was very much in that role when he was here um, in, in, a, in a lot of ways and did not see necessarily always the fruits of his own labor. And, was, and that's what he was teaching here. So then there are the reapers, and the reapers 
are the ones who, you know, cultivate the and, and bring in the harvest. And they, they toil and they do hard work as well. And they are actually seeing the end of the, so it's like the beginning of the process and the end of the process. Um, and, and so the reapers, you know, their focus is on the, the end result, the bringing in of the harvest, the, the delivering it to how it will be used as nourishment, as food, um, and the, um, the celebration of that harvest. And so the opportunity for the reapers is to realize maybe where they have felt, uh, um, have seen it as all their accomplishment or their work and sort of that ego side of things and maybe felt um, dismissive or of, of or maybe oblivious to um, what else went into the to that harvest being made possible you know whether that's the elements or those who did plant the seeds you know who uh, who prepared the ground, who tilled the ground and, and cultivated the soil. And I'm probably not using the right words, but I think you understand what I'm saying here. So it can be easy when you are in that reaper role. And I think we're all a little of both at different points of the journey. Some of us tend more toward one or the other. But um, when you are in that reaper role, it can be easy to you know, be short-sighted and not see the whole. And so the opportunity for the reaper is to find joy in in the bringing forward of the harvest yes and to celebrate all that went into making that whole harvest possible likewise the sower can find joy in the faithful living of their purpose day by day um, and the simple ways they are are planting the seed and then maybe moving on to somewhere else or something else or someone else um, but they are always planting that seed and to always be mindful of the value of that role and then to see it as connected to the whole harvest and and your part in the fulfillment of that whole harvest you know even when the the fields are or do you call it fallow the fields are not um you know are you're waiting you're in a time of reflection you're waiting and this is a time a season uh in the christian calendar it's a season of advent and waiting and reflection um and and a waiting for that light to come into the world and that light that is always coming into the world through the light of christ that goes out in every direction of time and space and and, and that most importantly uh comes through our hearts and into the world and is an offering of grace to our lives to receive and then to give back um, and to share that joy with others so i think what jesus was talking about with the sower and and the reaper and what what is so true in our time right now is that it's about the bringing together um, the coming together of, of, of ourselves um, soul to soul and the honoring of one another and all the gifts that have gone into creating this beautiful bountiful harvest that we feel coming that we know is is promised to us and that is many of us feel is absolutely grounded and rooted here now so that's what I wanted to share today uh, I, I think I'll close by sharing um, a passage from Paul give me just a sec or actually it's from uh, Philippians chapter 2 the beginning of that chapter is so beautiful I invite you to read it it's a, a hymn um, that talks about Jesus and the way he walked through this life so maybe read the beginning of chapter 2 but I want to close with pick up with um, around middle of the chapter um, so Paul is reminding um, us to to do what we do to be of service without argument um, with one another to become what he calls blameless and pure he says to become children of god without fault in a warped and crooked generation then he says in a verse leading into verse 16 he says then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life and then I will be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor in vain. But even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. So you too should be glad and rejoice with me. So this is a message 
that I was asked to share about rejoicing. It's about rejoicing in the harvest, even when we don't see the harvest yet. It's about rejoicing in our particular role, in our faithfulness to date, and you know, to forgive the places where we have not been faithful. That was, you know, definite lesson for me here with this. It was, you know, again, like I said, kind of funny how. Um, how he got my attention today and all of, I could go into the stories of all of the meaning of those uh, particular uh, songs and references um, and things that were used to remind me of my own journey and my own uh, faithfulness and faithlessness. And I was also reminded of the verse that says, you know, God is faithful and just and his love is ever present. I'm paraphrasing here, but his love is ever present regardless of our faithlessness or faithfulness. But our call is to celebrate in the joy of the harvest and the fact that we have been co-laborers with Christ, that we have each in our own unique way and Christ, I am speaking of that, uh, not just for Christians and those of us who are followers of the Christ. Christian actually means little Christ. That's the original meaning of the word. And uh, we've, you know, as, as a people, we've gone, you know, straight far from that. But, but this, it's an idea, it's an invitation for all of humanity to celebrate are um, working together and the ways that we have um, been co-laborers here in our time as we are creating um, and, and ushering in a new era rich in love and we are celebrating the gifts that we have each brought to that process. So whether you have been the sower or the reaper, whether you have been the woman at the well who you know feels that every, everything she's ever done good and bad has been exposed for all to see um and and or whether you are like the disciples who are like bewildered that here is jesus breaking the rules and not acting very rabbi like um and what is happening and we must bring things into order and and so wherever you fall in all of those various ways of looking at this journey we have been on together the invitation the invitation is so that we may celebrate together the harvest and its coming into fruition and to honor one another and to resist the urge to uh, devolve, you know, and be on a path of devolution into, or de-evolution, into uh, this, you know, kind of divisive environment and argument with one another, which we see being played out in a myriad of ways in our reality, um, in all, you know, different societal systems. Um, but it, it's to resist that urge and instead in the midst of this, you know, it, it, we could say certainly that we, it feels many times like we're still in the midst of this crooked and perverse generation uh, in the words that were used in Philippians, but in the midst of that, that we will shine among them like stars in the sky as we hold firmly to the word of life. The word is often um, a, this particular reference is, is not necessarily that in the Bible, but the word became flesh, says the first chapter of, of John, and dwelt among us. And in him, in him was life, and that life was the light of mankind. So the light is coming into the darkness and the darkness has not understood it the darkness cannot comprehend it and the darkness will not overtake it because this is this is a time to celebrate the one light in which we find our being and becoming the one light that is like a river of life running through us and and that is shared we sit at the table in the wilderness now with jesus the christ who came to show us who and who and what we are and that we are one family one family made of sowers and of reapers and who have all of us our short-sightedness and our flaws and our failings and our misgivings and all of that but this is a time to celebrate that we are co-laborers with Christ and that together we are working for a whole harvest. And that word whole and wholeness is really important right now. 
So I think I'll leave it at that. I just wanted to to share that message with you um, here on the, the winter solstice. And we know that the harvest will be reaped and that we as sowers and reapers will celebrate that together. And together we will walk hand in hand into this new earth.